All right, so what is hepatitis B? Well, it is a liver virus. Basically, adults tend to get this by blood transmission, so usually sharing IV needles for drug users, for example, or unprotected sexual intercourse. In pediatrics, vertical transmission from a mom who either does or doesn't know that she has hepatitis B to her child during birth is the most common way it gets transmitted. In the US, there's between 800,000 and 2.4 million people who are chronically infected with hepatitis B. Among women who are pregnant, it's about 0.7 to 0.9% of those births. So that means like 25,000 infants per year are at risk of getting hepatitis B. So that's why we're talking about it and why this is a critical issue. The official recommendation based on the AAP and the CDC is to have all infants universally given the first dose of the hepatitis B vaccine within 24 hours of birth if they are medically stable and they weigh more than two kilograms. So first, if a mom has hepatitis B but she doesn't realize it, then the risk of transmitting to her child is somewhere between 25% and 90%, depending on whether she's actively shedding virus. Now, if a child gets infected with hepatitis B, it is awful. So there's a 90% chance that that child will become chronically infected with the virus. So for you or I, for adults, if we get infected or exposed to hepatitis B, there's really only a five to 10% chance that we will have a chronic infection that lasts a long time. Most of the time, we clear the virus after an acute infection. Why does this matter? Well, basically, if you end up with a chronic infection, it is terrible news. It eventually will lead to cirrhosis or liver failure or hepatocellular carcinoma or cancer of the liver. And basically for infants who get infected, we're talking about a lifetime, like 20 to 25% mortality rate or death from this virus in absence of treatment. And with the vaccine, well, basically you have a 75 to 95% reduction in the likelihood of getting that infection transmitted from mom to baby. Before universal implementation, there were like 16,000 cases of hep B per year in children. And afterwards, we're talking about a like 90 to 99% reduction in those cases. So it has been very, very effective. Okay, so what are the arguments against universal administration? Well, opponents will often say, hey, look, in the United States, universal screening for hepatitis B is indicated and it's the standard of care. And to be honest, it's pretty good. We have high rates of compliance in the US. So 84 to 88% of women will get screened during pregnancy. And so the argument goes that, hey, if the screening is negative and the mom does not have risk factors for getting infected late in pregnancy, so we'll say IV drug use, unprotected sexual intercourse, working in a hospital at risk of needle sticks, that type of thing, then you say, well, then the risk to the child is actually quite low and we don't have to administer that vaccine immediately after birth. We'll talk about the specific adverse effects with the vaccine, but the logic would be, hey, if the patient is low risk, then we may as well avoid something immediately after coming out of the birth canal because it's just not needed. Okay, so let's unpack that a little bit because I think that this is the question that most people ask. It's like, well, look, my wife or, or I screen negative for hepatitis B. Do I really need to give this to my child if I think that I'm, I'm low risk? And there's a couple things to consider. So number one, screening for hepatitis B is a little bit complicated. There are a number of different antigens, surface antibodies that surface at different times based on when you're infected. So it's not always super clear if a mom is positive or not for hepatitis B. And there's this thing called the window period where if certain tests aren't sent, then somebody could falsely believe that a mom is actually not infected when she is. Secondly, like two thirds of people who are walking around with chronic hepatitis B infection have no idea that it's there. And then the third thing is among people who have hepatitis B, it's often 30% of the time that no risk factors are identified. So this is just not something you can point to obviously and know that you're doing okay. There is also the risk of horizontal transmission. So not from mom to baby, but actually from somebody else. And now this is definitely a lot more rare, but it is known that hepatitis B can live on hard surfaces for like seven days and so it's possible that with skin exposure to infected blood or body fluids could cause the baby to get infected that way okay so I've made the case for why you would want to give the hepatitis B vaccine but let's talk about things that could be concerning so adverse events are probably the biggest thing on people's minds so one critical thing is to understand, so there's something called the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, VAERS. This is a critical thing where doctors or healthcare professionals or anyone can report events that happen 
after vaccines or that seem temporally associated with the vaccines. What's important to note is that that means for basically anything that happens to an infant within the first month of life, there could be a clinician who says, I think that I should report this as associated with the hepatitis B vaccine. And the way that it gets used, it is not made to show causation. You really can't say that like the hepatitis B vaccine caused X, Y, or Z. But if you start to see a bunch of reports of the same thing over and over again happening in a temporal association after that vaccine, it allows public health officials to investigate further and think hard about what to do about it. So among the more than 20,000 adverse events that have been reported, just know that those are just adverse events that happen to people that may or may not be related to the hepatitis B vaccine. But even among those, only 6% were serious, and then in that big group, only 27 deaths of infants less than four weeks were reported. So overall, this is really good safety data. I think depending on who you are and your general feelings about vaccines, it's either gonna be something where you're like, oh my gosh, there are 20,000 adverse events associated with the Hep B vaccine, or, if you kind of look at the database for what it is, if there was no hepatitis B given or they're just giving saline, it is very likely that there would still be thousands and thousands of adverse events reported because bad things happen and they happen at random times. So overall to me, very reassuring data, but just wanna share it as openly as I can. There are rare reported autoimmune events like aplastic anemia, hemolytic anemia, and things like that, but of course, quite, quite rare. All right, so I think that's about it. So globally, number one for our society, I strongly encourage that we keep this universal practice because it's really helpful for anybody who doesn't have great prenatal care, might be at risk of hepatitis B, and they're not really sure about it. Even if you're in the group of a person who tested negative and low risk of getting it, I would still do it. So my wife and I fell into that group and we still did the vaccine for our child. And the main reason is that there's little downside from the risks associated with it. But if you're wrong for some reason, the system fails, the test fails, there actually was an exposure that mom didn't know about. You unfortunately now have given your child a 90% chance of ending up with a chronic infection that could lead to cancer, liver failure, and death. All right, so I hope you found that helpful. And if so, uh, liking, subscribing, or sharing would always be helpful. And uh, please leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions.